I'm very sorry to say there will be no timber framing mailbox video today. I know you're all very disappointed. I know you were looking forward to episode 100, 150. Uh, oh man, I was not prepared for the howls of indignation that I received in the comments for the idea of putting my official U.S. Postmaster approved plastic ABS pla er, mailbox on the, the timber frame. And uh, well, I don't know what to say other than mailboxes, they're kind of expensive uh, and I already have this one. There's nothing wrong with it. So I'm going to put this on there and until it gets swiped off, which happens regularly around here. But I do promise that when this, when this one's gone, uh, that we will put a better one. So many people upset said, well, you need to, you should, you should be building your own mailbox. You should make something nice. And I can tell you. From the amount of um, aggravation and hate that I've received in the comments from this series going too long, uh, no way, no way. We're not gonna. I, I can't do it. I can't. I can't. I can't have the pain anymore. So the reason why we're not doing the uh, timber frame mailbox today is that uh, all this week I'm in uh, wildland firefighter training with the Forest Service. I thought I'd talk about that a little bit. Uh, lots of young guys. Uh, not so young. Lots of guys even my age and older have uh, contacted me privately and expressed a lot of interest. Many of you are, are entering into, the, into this as, uh, as a summer, summer career for the first time. Um, so I want to talk about that a little bit. So wildland firefighting uh, is kind of like the Boy Scouts uh, in regards to how do you start. So you get involved with it and you start basically at the very bottom rung, at the lowest level as a firefighter one. It's kind of like, uh, well, I was never in the Boy Scouts, I was uh, in the Cub Scouts, but I mean, it's similar. Uh, but the merit badges, right? As you achieve um, more competence and you achieve different things, then you, of course, you know, you go on to bigger and better things, right? But I mean, as you start, you start as a basic firefighter and, and all you need to know basically is to do what you're told. Um, there's a lot of information, you don't really know what's going on, you're simply a body to do work, and that's basically where you start. So there's a, a series there's a, of trainings that you go to, and they all start with an S. And then you achieve these things, and, then, and they're called qualifications. So each year, maybe I should show you right now, I'll, I'll show you. So each year, um, depending on how motivated you are, and, and then they put an outside if you want to turn this into a career or not, you complete a series of what we call task books. These here are my task books. I have three task books currently going. And what a task book is, is a series of, uh, uh, of uh, little, uh, not so little, but uh, things that you have to accomplish to go to the next level. So. Let's say you start as a firefighter two, and you want to go on as a firefighter one. You will start one of these task books, and you will go out on the fire, and there's all sorts of little jobs and different things that you have to accomplish, and they have to be signed off by a supervisor, not just your supervisor, but anyone that is rated at the level that you're trying to achieve or higher. And then once that's all completed, and you've taken all of the classes and all of those things, then you submit this to a panel and they go through everything and they cross-reference everything and they check everything out to see, yes, did you indeed accomplish these tasks? And what they're kind of looking for is they want to see a good, nice variety of signatures on your task books, on the evaluation forms in the back. And what that prevents people from doing is, is let's say you have a buddy that you're working with at your fire station and he just goes and signs everything off. They'll take a look at that and they'll say, you know what, chances are that this guy didn't really perform these things and that he had a buddy that signed them off. So um, they're, not always, they're not always accepted. I have heard, just talked to a guy yesterday that submitted a task book for, sir, for an engine boss and he had nine signers on there and 14 fires and you know pretty solid book and they kicked it out and rejected it he had to go back to work on it so uh, what i'm doing uh, right now is knocking out these classes i'm in a class called s215 that i just completed yesterday and got my certificate for which teaches firefighters how to deal with the urban interface and what the urban interface is 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 homes and subdivisions that are now interfacing or built in right or right or in the midst of the forest 
and that's becoming kind of a problem and a concern where we have uh, wildland fires or forest fires in non-populated areas, you know, the mindset's kind of changing and we're getting to the point where we're starting to realize that these fires are healthy for the forest and sometimes it, it's okay to let them burn um, and just keep an eye on things and make sure they don't get into people's houses or protect structures or things like that. The problem with the urban interface is that all bets are off. It's very bad press for the forest service very bad press for the government and it's just it's bad form and nobody wants to have their house burnt up and so many many resources are devoted to saving these homes and this particular training that I'm going to now addresses that. It was very great. As you know I'm working, uh, I'm currently, my certification is as an ENGB slash T. That means an engine boss trainee. So you start firefighter 2, firefighter 1, Engine boss trainee, you can be in it. You can be in it. basically what it is is it's considered to be a single resource. It's finally getting to the point where you can operate autonomously, apart from someone holding your hand or really babysitting you. Um, it starts getting into real responsibility and being responsible for people. So they take it quite seriously. So that's where I, what I'm currently training on. So we finished that yesterday. That was a really great class. And where we live is one of the most unique dynamic and interesting places to fight wildland fire because the how the very terrain that we have the varied fuel models there's no place that i'm aware of in the country that has we can go uh, in the same day and fight a wildland fire in grassland and in heavy timber and subalpine and juniper and all of these things it's just it's really interesting so you have to have a really good broad range of understanding. So we were out and, and looking at some potential issues that, uh, that you know, we're really concerned with in this area if we were to get a fire in them. So today, um, I'll be heading out, I've got another training that's going to be covering uh, uh, working with pumps. Uh, working with pumps, whether it be the two-stroke high-pressure pumps like the Mark III's that we'll use for hose lays or the pumps that are going to be on the Type 1, Type one, Type 4, Type 6 engines. Uh, we're going to be covering all of that in detail. That's a class I've been looking forward to for a long time. So um, that's why I'm not doing the timber frame mailbox today. So it's all done. Jack and I, actually, he's going to start to dig in the hole today. I'll, I told him I'll, I'll wait. I'll bring you guys along. I think it might be an interesting one more video or so talking about. I have some things I want to share with you about uh, treating posts, uh, talking about dealing with rot, um, how we're going to handle that. And I think you might enjoy it. And, and all things will come clear. You know, why is this thing so big and why is it so long? And we'll take care of all of that. Let me show you a couple close-ups on the task book here. And, uh, and then, oh, I've got one more surprise for you. So guess what came in the mail? We're going to try this out here very, very soon. We'll try it out, see how it works, see if the Japanese pole saw is the answer to all my, my sawing issues. But let, let, me, let me bring you in here the task book and I'll show you a couple things. Well, I'll tell you, when you start getting into the um, into uh, this level of wildland firefighting, you start to become, well, the paperwork is, I mean, you b I basically have to carry this briefcase around uh, with, with all sorts of information, I mean, all sorts of stuff. I got to do all sorts of paperwork, starting to get in the, in the position where I'm, um, you know, being in charge of maybe, maybe called to be IC on these small scenes, and it's just, it's a, it's a lot of responsibility, and it's a lot of it's so many things going on and so many things to deal with that you, you have to have lots of checklists and you have to have a lot of aids and things to assist you, or I do anyway, I just don't have that much experience. So here's a task book. So this right here, I'm not going to show you my personal information on the front there, but this is a, um, uh, my current task book that I have completed for uh, Engine Boss. And that's why when I said that I was an Engine Boss trainee, uh, I'm qualified. Uh, I can I can get my engine boss. I can be red carded at the state level. But working with the Forest Service, they have a whole a higher standard, and so I am choosing to to not go the state route. But I want to really earn this, and and I feel like I need one more season under my belt before I, I I'll, before I be comfortable really taking on that title. Uh, it's not a it's not a small thing, and so I want to uh, one more season, and I'll feel really solid on it. But you can see here. So these are, uh, this is a task book, and it's going to be very common, and you're going to have tasks here. And, and they'll tell you here, you have OI, the, and this, the legend will tell you that these can be done, have to be done in certain areas. So an O, for example, that can be done just as a regular training. You can do that at your department, you can do that off a wildfire, where when you see something that has an I next to it, 
that's got to be done uh, on a on a wildland fire that it has the ICS system, a big I, you know, a big organized fire. And so what you'll have is is that you'll have to make sure that you do all these tasks, and then you'll have someone who is rated at higher than you, uh, qualified to sign, and they will. Okay, did you do this? They'll sign it off, they'll date it, and they'll give you an evaluation in the back. And you store these evaluations in the back, and then when this book is complete, when all your classwork is done, then you basically, uh, then you submit it uh, for your, uh, for, for review uh, to see if you move on to the next level. And then when you're red carded, I can't show you all the stuff, it's got my information on it. Let me fold it over here and I'll, I'll kind of show you what a red card looks like. So here you go. Here's a red card. They're not uh, they're not red anymore. They used to be. My first one I got in 2000. It was red. So you can see here that I am cur currently operating as a FFT1 uh, and a, in a trainee position as an ENGB, engine boss, engine boss, single resource, as well as an ICT5. What that means is we're getting into incident command uh, to be able to oversee and to run incidents. Five is the lowest level. That's where you begin. That would be like a very small incident. And then they go up to four, three, two, one to the big ones, which are ones. So I currently have a completed task book. So I'll be red carded this year as an ENGBT trainee, firefighter one, ICT five. I've got that completed and a class B faller. So I'll be able to, to do that. So uh, again, so this is a, this is that's kind of what a red card looks like for those many of you have asked about it, and that's uh, that's what it is. Mm -hmm.